Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about Sidedal uh, Grid Scale Battery, the worst name ever. The, literally, I'm not joking, that's what they named their system, Grid Scale. So that's a really bad naming convention. On top of that, you have to understand the word Grid Scale. Every Tom, Dick and Harry is talking about it. What exactly is the need for this? Well, reality is we are adding a lot of intermittent power systems, meaning things that produce power when they like it, basically solar. Now you may be like, isn't solar supposed to be stable? As in like, yes, it will not work at night but like let's say from uh, 7 to uh, you know 7 to 7 or 7 to 5 uh, it should be absolutely stable well no you have something known as weather something known as cloud rain so reality is that we do not control the output of these puppies now of course there would be a general output so if it's like a 2 gigawatt plant even on worst uh, cloudy day it will still produce 500 megawatts but that's the problem it's not stable it's not like a coal power plant where it's like 500 continuous power uh, 200 percent minus my would be my buffer so that's not there so that's an issue on top of that, as a consumer, we also are intermittent, meaning our power uh, basically uh, consumption habits are not fixed thing it's not like you know oh, oh, at night we have like we literally people uh, who manage energy grid for living they have a issue uh, they have to study everything basically they study people's behavior regarding big sports events that's like how big uh, you know uh, unpredictability is there that if there is a like uh, let's say a big uh, indian cricket match india versus pakistan power load will be like whoosh, that happens so that's a serious thing so not only the demand is uh, unstable the supply is also unstable so how do you make all these two get married together properly well we need huge energy storage that's the only reality where we can solve this puppy and to go 100 percent renewable which every country wants to do not because it's uh, you know basically environmentally fit nobody cares about environment but everybody cares about their wallet you're like coal power plant at this point in time will cost you more than a solar farm so everybody is making solar farm so reality is we want to do 100 percent uh, renewable we are trying to do it but we need this puppy and what does grid scale inherently means inherently something that can touch one gigawatt hour capacity at the least or actually it should be scalable so yeah you can start a plant that is only 500 megawatt hour capacity but like the technology should be in a such a way that hey can i order like you know pick up a phone and be like hey can you give me two gigawatt hour five gigawatt hour that should be feasible pumped hydro is the only technology that at this point in time can claim that other technology on paper can do that but the moment you look at the economics of it it's like lol so that's the whole thing the moment you think about uh, energy storage you, the first thing you will think about batteries and batteries are what we call classified as electrochemical system they inherently do not scale well they're awesome for a small scale for example your mobile phone they can only work on that your electric car awesome great gg don't even think about it those things awesome but the moment you start to talk about gigawatt hour the amount of money these puppy will consume would be too goddamn high and not to mention if whole planet starts to consume it uh, there is no mine uh, nothing on this earth that can provide the minerals needed and not to mention it will also cause severe price hike on every other electronic device you really don't want to live in a world where your smartphone is 10 times more expensive simply because the battery in it is now expensive so that's the reality electrochemical system they are good for small kind of system the moment you start to open your mouth and like i want gigawatt hour capacity yeah they are like lol like you can do it physics is not stopping you neither is engineering the moment economics touches the system it catches on fire and in case of lithium and they actually catch on fire so that's the reality of it electrochemical system is does not have the, currently any technology that can you know scale up to gigawatt hour so what is this design the grid scale battery really bad name uh, well what they are doing is basically they are utilizing a heat pump and they are having two thermal mass meaning thermal mass a thermal mass b now how they are uh, operating is they are operating this puppy on what we classify as turbo expander so they have two thermal mass one would be hot one would be cold and uh, the system is completely closed loop now again they uh, right now they are in a very early prototyping stage so they have like atmospheric coming in but i think once they finalize the design they will seal it up with uh, nitrogen or something like that so because again at high temperatures things react you do not want water vapor at high temperatures because it will corrode anything and not to mention oxygen can react with almost anything including rocks so you i am pretty sure they will uh, like you know seal it up and have a normal uh, you know nitrogen filled environment there so it's a closed loop system now it's a heat pump meaning exactly the same thing that you have in your air condition you have a hot side and you have a cold side basically evaporator and condenser now only difference between that puppy and this puppy is that this is not changing state meaning uh, the gas the working fluid aka air never changes state it will never go from like let's say solid to liquid or to gas it's like it's always remains in gaseous phase that's the difference aspect of it but it's a heat pump system meaning uh, it's not creating heat it's pumping heat from point a to point b basically it's creating temperature delta it's not like a resistive heater where like resistive heaters are 100 efficient so you put one kilowatt of energy in you get one kilowatt of thermal energy output 
awesome but heat pumps are different they will suck energy from somewhere and then dump into something so basically in winters you can have a, if you have a small window unit just reverse it you will have really good energy savings that time and that's why like almost all new air conditioned units come with a heat pump function so uh, that simply means when you are trying to heat this puppy up you are creating a negative meaning you are creating a temperature uh, delta so you have this is cold this is hot now to achieve this they are utilizing this system meaning uh, what we call turbo expander now this puppy is kind of rarely used for normal day-to-day -day use but these are backbone uh, level technology for uh, oil and gas industry they run on this puppy if they do not have turbo uh, expanders yeah they're gonna go bankrupt that's how important that system is so what's happening here is basically you uh, you have surplus power meaning grid is not consuming power and your wind farm or solar farm is still producing power okay you turn the motor motor basically uh, starts the compressor side of things the moment your compressor side starts to uh, work up it sucks energy from one point basically it's uh, you know extracting air from one point and then compressing it and dumping into another thing now this part is heats up this part is goes cold now the air that is coming out of this on the bottom part goes through a heat exchanger to basically bring it down to lower temperature and then it goes to expander now this is the critical aspect it's still on the same shaft the expander lets the gas in and gas out now the at the output temperature of that gas is much lower temperature it's literally like how your compressor does and this is literally a compressor system only difference is there is no expansion valve there is an expansion unit extender wheel meaning that's why uh, they call about expander there is a compressor and expander both thing at the same point so this puppy can work continuously like uh, how our refrigerator units are built they are built on like on off on off but this puppy is built like continuously 24 into 7 into 365 until like a maintenance cycle and all that just so so that's how they are working now they do have one uh, point of energy waste basically the six number and this basically if you are trying to extract uh, air is still at 75 degrees celsius so 75 degrees celsius is not very good for like cooling things down even the expander stage cannot cool it down that much so they have to dump a bit of energy there so that's a bit of energy loss now their original intent is where they are testing it in denmark is like uh, they're gonna dump that heat into uh, you know district heating system so they will get much much higher efficiencies but that is a point of loss but other than that whole system is closed and this cycle will repeat basically uh, once this puppy basically um, heats up this will become the cold unit so it works both ways so you will not have like okay this will be the hot one continuously no once this reaches saturation you charges it up during discharge cycle this will start to cool down and this will start to heat up that's how it will work so turbo expander is the core behind it basically a system that compresses and expands at the same shaft so how they are implementing it? Well, implementing on this puppy is not that difficult. It's just a system that is acting as a heat pump. But heat pump can only work if you have a mass. Basically, you have thermal mass. Now, how they are achieving the thermal mass is basically like this. That is an insulated tank, meaning they're going to build a tank. They may have a tank inside the tank or they may have a, like one tank with a giant insulation system on that. And that tank is filled with rocks, meaning uh, of course, they want to select certain types of rock, but their uh, analysis is very simple. Rocks are very cheap transportation cost on rocks are very high so meaning you want to use rocks that are available not something that is optimum because again cost is uh, pr uh, you know the most important thing in rajasthan you may find certain types of rock that may not be available in somewhere else so you will use what you can find locally now again thankfully earth has more than enough rocks we never gonna run out of rocks so that's enough and that rock is your thermal buffer or thermal storage so to say and the bigger the th uh, thermal buffer you get bigger the thermal storage you get the more capacity you get. your capacity is this buffer and that's the main advantage of this thing is that if you take the whole cost of the system only 10% of the total cost goes into the capacity side of it now benefit the moment you start to scale it up basically you could have a system that is very low capacity meaning let's say only one megawatt or two megawatt like you are running a small district and that's more than enough that's that's GG but here's the you want to uh, you have a giant solar farm that produces GG amount of power you have uh, you know wind that produces GG amount of power but they are not stable you send on this puppy and you just add tanks you just go yolo on tanks you add as many tanks as you want of course you have to add tanks in pairs one uh, one for a one for b and those will uh, switch over they will one one time they, in one cycle they will become hot another cycle they will become cold so you will always add them in pairs now these things are only 10 percent of the cost so you can add as many as you want you can start the main building system and you will barely have capacity of let's say running at full power at one hour then you're like okay the system is tested everything is ready we have some profit now you add more tank now you have double the runtime you have four tanks you have eight times the runtime and in theory they can achieve ludicrously wrong run times meaning uh, they can have 50 megawatt power plants that are running eight hours nine hours or 12 hours 
So that's the whole point of using the system. This is their genius part. It's like they need two thermal storage system that is stable at uh, you know very low temperatures and at very high temperatures. So high temperature is like around 600 degrees Celsius. Low temperature is around minus three, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. So minus 30 rock does not care that much. Minus six, uh, plus 600 rock still does not care that much. So, and air is the working fluid so they are not using any refrigerant i'm pretty sure they will remove the air after uh, once they finalize the system because it's a really bad idea to have air at 600 degrees celsius it's like nitrogen is good uh, energy medium helium would be even better hydrogen would be awesome but it does have a tendency to go boom at 600 degrees celsius so i can easily see either helium or hydrogen uh, or nitrogen so uh, that will be the working fluid and turbo expander is the main driver that is the right now is the limiting factor because uh, when i talked about uh, basically cryogenic air battery system they were using everything that you can buy and those things are being made in very large scale meaning you can just pick up a phone call up siemens hey uh, can you you know ship me a turbine that is like you know 500 megawatt they're like got you fam you can call abb can you give me a synchronous generator that is like you know 500 they're like got you fam this Turbo expander is a big thing. It is a backbone of many uh, oil and gas industries, but they are not in a scale that we want. They are like, you can, the highest I have seen is five megawatts. Like, again, you can have two or three, five megawatt system and may maybe you want that. Maybe you want a system where you have multiple small generators so you can have much more control output, much higher uh, service uh, uptime simply because if one goes down, you can replace it uh, while your system is still working. So there are some benefits of that, but it's not a unit that you can just, you know, pick up a phone. Hey, can you give me a 700 megawatt power unit? That's not there yet. Again, this company can still build it because technology is proven. If there is a demand for it, some engineer will figure it out how to build it. But uh, that's the limiting factor. And that's why that 90% of the cost in is this small thing. This, super cheap. And compared to uh, basically cryogenic air system, cryogenic air system needs three systems. One, a rock system, which is for cold storage, hot water system, which is for hot storage, and a liquid nitrogen tank. So it needs three tanks whenever you want to upgrade the capacity. This needs one tank. Like basically one manufacturer if you uh, figure out like how to manufacture one tank you can just keep making bigger diameter as you want and rocks whatever is locally sourceable so you can utilize that so implementation this is their prototype one on large scale and they are testing it out at this one time they got a contract to build one uh, full scale one uh, where will be like the final testing would be there are there any issues with this system? Yes. The biggest issue, even compared to cryogenic air system, this puppy has much larger delta, meaning 630 degrees Celsius delta. The hot side goes really hot and the cold side goes really cold. Now, really cold compared to liquid nitrogen may not sound right, but it has to go 600 plus. And metals do not care about temperature that much. Like if they are built for that temperature, they can handle it. Like 600 metal is like, I don't care. You can find metals like that. But problem is, the moment you go from 600 to minus 30, that contraction is the problem. Uh, so that, uh, thermal stress on the system is very brutal like it can destroy anything known to man and uh, that's the thing you have to understand it, they said like they can go 10,000 cycles I know for a fact that uh, cryogenic air system can work much higher than that how every component they use in that was already in use and I mean in industrial use meaning you can uh, pick up a phone hey do you have a synchronous generator yes uh, how long it's been running oh yeah the it was last time down 10 years ago and it was not down it was taken off for servicing and maintenance so that's the reality everything in uh, that design was like tested to large extent this not so much especially the tank part so that is a very serious thing the thermal stress and rocks while you may think the rocks are quite solid quite stable they are not that strong or stable because again i know for a fact that most of you know for a fact that if you put rocks in river river will erode it no matter how strong it is same will happen with air of course much slower but how can you speed it up heat the air and this puppy are talking about 600 degrees Celsius heat so rock will literally you can put a chunk of rock just due to thermal expansion and contraction it could crack like this uh, going from high to low high to low and as i specified the 600 degrees Celsius temperature delta is very brutal so rocks will erode and crack and that could create a scenario where you will uh, they want to put a rocks that are specific size so flow rate is awesome and thermal capacity is also balanced so you have to balance that if you have a powder the basically flow rate will be compromised Capacity would be awesome, but flow rate would be zero. Air will not flow through it. You want, uh, you know, rocks. If you have very big rocks, flow rate would be awesome, but capacity would be very bad. So they need a perfect size. Now, I do not think those perfect size will last very long. Now, again, how long? It will only be figured out once they built a real scale unit with real rocks and all that jazz, and they are running it, you know, day in and day out. Only then we'll know how long they will last because they specified they're expecting a life cycle of 10,000 units. And I think that's the inherent limitation. The tanks going through that much, uh, you know, thermal stressing, the rocks literally will turn to dust at that kind of cycling so there is an inherent factors that are limited uh, limiting its lifespan most of them can be managed and with good maintenance you can even have a uh, you know basically wooden house that has been surviving thousands of years it can 
be done. It's just like uh, there are some inherent limitation and low system efficiency. Even though this is a closed system, unlike a nitrogen system in cryogenic inner system, where you're removing air a bit from the atmosphere and then removing water vapor from it, pollutants from it, carbon dioxide from it, you're losing a lot of energy doing that. This, even though it's a closed system, the realistic expectation is around 60% efficiency, and that's at the higher end. If they cross 50% above, that's awesome, but uh, do not expect very ludicrously high efficiency. Yes, they are. They have a waste heat which they want to use it for district heating, but district heating is not something that is available everywhere. So there are some issues that you have to be mindful about. However, what we can expect in the future? Well, the reality is we need a lot of tools. At this point in time, we are so early that we cannot say this works, this does not work. This works, this is awesome, this is that. We do not know anything about anything at this point in time. So if there are 10 people working on 10 solutions, then only we have a probability that at least two or three of them will work out. So we want as many engineers, as many scientists, as many people working on as many different ideas as possible. Only then we'll have a future where we'll have uh, amazing capacity. Because think of it this way, like in early 2000s, when people were talking about, first time they were talking about like in global warming and all that just the biggest thing was like how else would you produce the power at this point in time nobody talks about that nobody talks about this like everybody knows that if you want to build power plant that can supply power for a whole nation solar can do that wind can do that we got that like we have solved that issue even india knows how to do that so that's not an issue but the reality is how the heck you balance that the balance that is only possible if you have a grid scale energy storage system and we need more than enough uh, you know more than million people working at it at this point in time that's the weak link that's the final nail in the coffin because people are building solar farms why it's cheaper it's like you want that you want that you don't want people to go into sort of um, oh it's for environment that's one bad day away from like you know people abandoning that project but if you say build this it's good for your wallet everybody's like shut up and take my money you want that output and the only reason we are not doing uh, at bonkers limit is like that's the reality we do not have energy storage system offshore wind farm they have reached a point where they are working 24 hours but they have to be curtailed most of the time because grid cannot absorb that much energy and it does not have a way to store that energy so that's the serious limitation and to get 100 percent renewable we need bonkers amounts of this like i can easily see a future where india has a uh, multiple hvdc links india is already world leader in that where we have each state connected to HVDC backbone that can we can transmit power throughout the country and then at the you know substations basically where they are uh, converting HVDC to AC high voltage AC there they have energy storage center huge energy storage center so during Rajasthan desert area of India they are over producing no problem they don't have to curtail they are like just sell it sell it to sell it to South India South India during uh, monsoon season they are like bro we got more than enough wind energy have it all have it have it have fun have fun so we need this at this point in time we need this sort of technologies and i want more than enough people to work on it too so maybe in future we'll have one or two that are like dude we solved it but right now uh, if i have to place my money i am more partial to basically a liquid air system rather than this this even though it has less components the temperature stress are like stressing me out so this was my presentation on uh, basically the worst named battery system, grid scale battery system. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free and as always, thanks for watching.